All right, so everybody's in, I'm assuming? Yes. All right, so what I would like you to do right now is to take one minute. Don't worry about, yeah, take one minute and kind of recapture. Um, what is our essential question, everybody? What compels us to survive? Compels us to survive. So think about Julie. Talk about what is compelling Julie to survive. What things have happened to her and how is she surviving based off the part one that we read um, yesterday? You may go. Right. Hey, what do you guys think? That's quite a summary. Three, two, and one. So we know Julie is out there. Someone, what happened to her first? What happened to Money? Her bag was gone, and then she was just out there. What, Nicola? Uh, trying to look for it. Look for it, and what else, Brooklyn? In her bear suit. She was didn't have anything, right? Her entire life was out in that pack. So did she just give up? No. no. Or is she trying to survive? She's trying to survive. She's trying to survive. So we have to finish the rest of the story. What do we call this part of the story? Part, 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 excerpt. everybody. Excerpt. An excerpt of the story. So we're going to read the next excerpt. We're also going to be thinking about what the theme is, compelling to survive. She wants to survive, just like all the stories in this text. So you're going to uh, follow along, but I am going to ask, mm, Adriana, what are we learning about? Um, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I will be able to read to identify and annotate key events that include my character's attitude. Okay, so write your name in there, honey. So there's a little twist in this one. We know what annotate is. Don't we know what annotate means? Yes. Okay, look on your chart. What does annotate mean? Yes. To break apart. Okay, and this one includes character's attitude. So we're specifically looking for things about the character's attitude. Does she have a reason to be like, oh, poor me? So what would her attitude be? Down. Down, right? So we're looking for things about the character's attitude. How is she feeling? What is she doing? Um, how is she trying to survive? Ellie? She's trying to survive by um, just um, trying to stay warm and um, just... Okay, but we're going to look for specific key details, right, in the text in the text that support that. So this is kind of an addition. I don't think we've seen this yet. Usually it just says find key, annotate key ideas, right? Right, yeah. All right, so this one is we're looking for attitude. And then, uh, Ryan, what's the next two? Use key events to summarize the text. Have we done that a million times? Yes. Yes, yes. and then the last one? Sure. Everybody. Okay. Okay. And that's going to be the last part. You are going to share your key events with a partner, okay? So remember, when annotating key events that include the character's attitude, things to look for, um, what is she thinking? What does she find? What does she do next? So those are things we're going to be highlighting, okay? Uh, the person, let's see, Ariel, Imani, Matthew, Adriana, Ellie and Brooklyn, tell your group what the purpose of our annotation is. You may start. Right, good job, Matthew. Okay. All right, three, two, one. So, highlighters ready? All right. Um, I'm going to be walking around and seeing what you highlight. Remember, we're looking for the character's attitude. Attitude. Attitude is everything, as Ms. Prim would say, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we are on page 26. 
Uh, make a prediction looking at that page with your group. What do you think is going to happen there? You think so? What do you think about the poor dog? Yeah. Okay. So you're making a prediction based off the last part of the story. Okay. All right. Uh, Hayden, what do you think is happening on that page? Uh, um, my whole group basically just said that um, her, that little sharp tool, with the little sharp tool, she's going to try and skin the wolf. Maybe. Ooh, maybe. Does the wolf look like he's very happy? No. Okay. What do I tell you guys when you see a, do a book with a dog on the cover? What happens? <laughs> Never good for the dog, right? Never good for the dog. Okay, Nicola, what did your group say? Maybe, like, she's going to help the dog because the, it looks like the dog's hurt. Okay. Brooklyn? Um, my group talked about how she kind of pulled up and, like, the uh, wolf was, like, laying on the ground. Okay. Landon? I think is that because last time we read, uh, she woke up and she saw the wolf on the ground. And I think, like Ada said, they're gonna, she's going to skin the wolf. Okay. Oh, hope we don't have to read that. Oh. All right. Let's be ready. I'm going to slow this down a little bit for you guys. Wrapping. Okay, we all there? Yep. yep. All right. Wrapping the drag around one foot and her sleeping skin around the other, she clumped awkwardly through the grass in a wider and Turn wider highlighting. circle, hoping that Jello, having eaten her meat, would have abandoned the pack. She did not care about the food anymore. Her ulu and needles and more? matches were more important to find. With them, she could make shoes, hunt, and cook. She marveled at how valuable these simple things were, how beautiful and precious. With them, she could make a home, a larder, a sled, and clothes. And the cold air was equally precious. With it, she could, like her father, freeze leather and sinew into sleds, spears, and harpoons. She would not die here if she could find her ulu and needles. As she carefully searched the ground, she began to think about seal camp. The old Eskimos were scientists, too. Okay. Uh, let's see. Leah, did you highlight any key detail there affecting her attitude? Or just what a key event did you think was important? doing right there everybody she's like she's making trying tools. To make tools trying to make tools trying to make a new pair of boots trying to trying to move on so share with your group one thing you highlighted um, she did not care about the food anymore yeah. 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 yeah i did she and then oh what did she do Okay, let's continue on. We should be wrapping up conversations. Nice job. All right. By using the plants, animals, and temperature, they had changed the harsh Arctic into a home, a feat as incredible as sending rockets to the moon. She smiled. The people at Seal Camp had not been as outdated and old-fashioned as she had been led to believe. No, on the contrary, they had been wise. They adjusted to nature instead of to man-made gadgets. Aid, she gasped. On the side of a ground swell lay Jello, his body torn in bloody shreds, his face contorted. Beside him lay her backpack. Instantly, she knew what had happened. Amarok had turned on him. Once, Kapugan had told her that some wolves had tolerated a lone wolf until the day he stole meat from the pups. With that, the leader gave a signal and his pack turned, struck, and tore the lone wolf to pieces. There is no room in the wolf society for an animal who cannot contribute, he had said. 
Okay, before you turn the page, boy, that was pretty graphic, yes? Oh, yes, yeah, so I, was there a huge key event that happened on there? Yes. yes, so share with your group. I think I walking around, I'm thinking everybody's picking the same thing. You may go. Um, what I did was on the side of the, of the ground, swell lays up. His body is worn in tracks, his face contorted. Beside him lay her back. Like, that's basically I what said, that's the right. thing that I have. Three, two, one. Um, Ellie, will you share with me uh, exactly what you just said about what we highlighted? I know we're all thinking about the uh, yucky part, right? Go ahead. What you just said. Okay. Um, I, so I, the details itself are um, like very, um, like it paints a picture for me, but the details are so gruesome. Do you agree with that? Who agrees mm -hmm. with that? I do. Yeah, yeah. But that's a, it makes you want to read on, right? Yeah. So those of you that thought she was going to skin the wolf, is that really what happened? No. no. Something attacked the wolf, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you think the pack did? Could have So what's the purpose? Why did the wolf get attacked by its pack? Because he stole meat. He stole meat. What else? And he um, left. He was left. Was he a team player? No. 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 We know that about the wolf pack, right? They they like to stick together and they don't accept if they're not part of their little clan. So predictions were a little bit scary there, huh? Yeah. Right, we ready to turn the page? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is sad. General had been self-howed. He was useless, and now he was dead. Slowly, she opened her pack. The food was gone, mm -hmm. but her needles, ulu, and boots were tucked in the pockets where she had put them. They were now more wonderful to my axe than airplanes, ocean liners, and great wide bridges. As she put on her shoes, she checked for a man's knife and matches. They were there too. Life was hers again. Slinging her pack to her shoulders, she placed a stone at Jello's head and turned away. Okay, a couple of interesting things on that page. Um, let's see, Lily, what is one thing you highlighted there? She placed the Turn away. Who agrees with that? Okay, so what is that showing you? Talk with your group. What is that showing you? She placed a stone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like, no, I, think, dead. I think she would help him. That's a name. Yeah, she wants to care for him. Eyes up here in three, two, one. Yes, that's showing you she has a lot of compassion. So would that go back to the character's attitude right there? Mm -hmm. Is she just like, oh, the wolf's died. I'm so sorry. Move on. Or is she really showing that she cared? She's, she's showing right. She's right. So that's a really good key detail there that's supporting the character's attitude. Um, how did she feel when she found all of her stuff? Happy. 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 And they're better than they, she could imagine, right? Because she missed them so much. All right, last little paragraph. Uh, make a prediction with your group. Look at that picture. Where is she at? What's she doing? What do you think is going to happen at the end? All right, three, two, and one. Last little bit. You've got to be a super wolf to live, she said. Poor Jello was not. She left him to the jaggers and foxes. Amrock, wolf, my friend, she sang as she walked along. Amrock, my adopted father. Reaching Point Hope seemed less important now that she had come to truly understand the value of her ulu and needles. If she missed the boat, she could live well until another year. Her voice rang out happily as she sang and followed the birds and her compass. Okay, good job. Now, what I want to ask you is that last line, does that go back to our objective about attitude? Read the last line with your group. What does it say? So is she happy? Yes. Yeah. She's relieved. She's happy. She's feeling kind of like she can go on, right? Remember at the beginning of the story, she was not happy. All right. Good job, guys. Um, 
We are going to do, this is what's gonna happen, don't go until I say go. Uh, with a partner, you're going to take one piece of text evidence that you highlighted and summarize that event in your book. Okay, so I'm gonna say it again. One piece of text evidence you found and you're going to highlight that in your book. Um, I have an example for you of one that I chose, okay? So with your table, you're gonna do that. So my example is Julie creates makeshift boots and goes to search for her pack. So that happened at the beginning of the story, the, the part that we read today, correct? Yeah. Yes. So that was my key event. Uh, or I'm sorry, this is my summary. This is my text that supports that. Wrapping the drag around one foot and her sleeping skin around the other, she clomped awkwardly through the grass. So she, did she create her own boots? Yes. yes. So this is my text evidence. This is my summary of that event. Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. yes. Okay. So you're going to choose one text evidence that you have. You and your partner can summarize it. And then you're going to switch. So you might do Lily's first and then Ashlyn's, or maybe you're lucky enough to have the same one. Okay? Let's try to pick different parts of the story. You have about three minutes. Can we do it in three minutes? Yeah. All right, the person with the longer hair next to you uh, goes first. Diego, why don't you move next to Hayden? Charlie, move next to Ellie. And MJ, move next to Brooklyn, please. All right, you may start. Okay, which one are you guys going to pick? Okay, good. So how are you going to summarize that? Which one are you using? Okay, so what does that mean? Okay. All right, which one are you going to use? Okay, somebody else is already using that. You want to pick a different one? What about this one? What does that mean? Okay, why is she happy? Okay, there you go. That's a wonderful summary because that kind of includes stuff that happened at the beginning of the excerpt. Okay, yes, sir. Huh? No, so what key detail did you highlight that you want to use in your summary? Teresa, do you have one ready to go? Okay, so why don't you listen to Teresa's. Teresa, what's your, what are you going to use? Okay, can you expand on that summary though? So yes, she's happy at the end, but what did ha what happened all before? Did she go through a lot of things that happened before? Okay, so include that in your summary. Charlie, Charlie, which one are you using, hon? She, okay, which one are you using, Ellie? Okay, so write it here. You're gonna write it in here, okay? So you're gonna write it in here. Which one are you using, Brooklyn? Dylan, are you, do you wanna come join the group, or are you good? Okay, which one did you do? She placed this one. Okay, so what does that mean? Tell me your summary. So your summary is going to go there. What do you write? Okay. What do you, which one are you using? Oh, I love that one. I haven't seen anybody do that. So what does that mean, life was hers again? You don't need to rewrite that. Just tell me the summary. Okay. So why does she care about getting her backpack back? Could she? She couldn't survive. Survive, right? Very good. Okay. Do you have yours written down yet? Write your summary in your book. Let me see yours. Oh, in here. Mm-hmm. Where is it? No, no, in here. Where are you? Which piece of text evidence are you using? Okay, so what, write your summary here, I want to see it. So I like that one, and we're going to be using this word swell in our next activity, so good job. So let me see your summary. Okay, so what is your summary? Why is that important? You're going to find out, yes. Mm -hmm. And that kind of goes with the theme. Good. 
Okay, so we got a lot of people writing. Ariel, where's your summary? Are you picking your text evidence right now? Okay. Did you pick yours? Yes. Julie was a comment like Ariel had turned on him. We both did that. Okay. So I would use that one. Ooh, Jaggers. Okay. I think we'll use the Jaggers and Fox. That's fine. Write your summary. What's your summary going to be? Why are the Why are they important? Okay, write that down. Good job. All right, you should be wrapping up in about one minute. I'm seeing a lot of good summaries. Jello got killed because he was selfish about the food. In the yes, he was. In the Texas states, that was very good. Is that you? Did you choose the same one? Okay. All right. Let me read yours. Okay. This one's not happily. Good job. Okay. So three, two, what? It's fine. Okay. Do you need to blurt that out, or you can you just chill? Yeah. You're our principal of the day. You know that. Okay. Thumbs up. All right. I saw really good summaries. A lot of you used uh, the one about the headstone. David, which one did you use? I used the one when it says Jello got killed because he was selfish about the food. Okay. So he used. Anybody else used selfish about the food? Okay, Nicola, which one did you use? I used, uh, her boyfriend got happily as she sang and followed the birds in the compass. Who used that one? Good job. Raise your hand high. Good job. Brooklyn? I said her life was hers again. I love that one. Who used that one? Okay, she really felt like that. Like, oh, I can move on. Uh, anybody else want to share? Imani? Uh, I said uh, that um, Amarok had turned on him. Okay, so... Um, we are going to move on. Good job. You will need your book. You will also, you're going to do a quick little objective here. Let's see. Today, Ellie, what are we doing? I'll be able to reread to find context clues in order to determine the meaning of multiple meaning words. Ooh, multiple meaning words. Those are fun. And let's see. Ryan, oh, I already picked on you. Ariel, what's the next one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have a couple of different definitions that you're going to have to pick. And then the last one, everybody, share my word, share knowledge, my word knowledge, knowledge during collaborative during conversations in writing. writing. Collaborative means all together. Okay, so the next one. All right, this is going to be in your book. And I, you know me, I love my words, right? So you are, I believe it's page 36. I am right. Okay. No, 36. But you will need your, your you're going to find the words in context. All right. Nicola, page 36 of your blue book. All right, so we have a lovely graphic organizer that has four words from our story, correct? What's the first one? Bear. Hmm. Anybody remember where we saw that part of the story? What does that mean? She was what? Well, wouldn't that be terrible to be out there in the cold? And what paragraph is that in? Four. And then what's the next one? Desolate. Desolate. And that's in paragraph 10. What's the next one? Sensitive. And that's in also in paragraph 10. And then, Sam, you have this in your summary. What's the last word? Swell. Swell. And I think we all know a couple of meanings. So swell could mean you're a swell guy. Swell. You're a swell girl there, Miss Ellie. Or you get hit in the eye. What happens to your it's eye? Swell. Swells. Swell. But did any of those happen in the story? No. No. So we have to figure out the different meaning in the word swell. All right, so go to paragraph four and let's find the word bared and find the context clue for that. OK, 
Okay, are we seeing it? Yes. All right, so I'm looking right here, right? What is the context? Paragraph four, Jello screams, and goes on. He was almost beside her. His teeth, what? Bared. His teeth bared as he growled. So let's write that down. In quotations, his teeth bared as he growled. Okay, if I was anywhere near that dog, I think I'd let him have whatever he wanted. Who agrees with that? Nope. Yes. Okay. All right, then when you're done with that, let's go on to find paragraph 10, the word desolate. Desolate. Somebody's already found it? You guys are fast. Okay, we actually highlighted it the day before that. Okay, but am I just going to put angry and desolate wolf or should I put a little bit more? Okay, the bitter odor of an angry and desolate wolf. It could not have been jello for the scent did not have the bitter odor of an angry and desolate wolf. Okay, so I would probably start from about here, not have the bitter odor. Okay, not... Oops, I'm writing this in the wrong spot. I am so sorry. Oh. It's okay if you did. Just do that. Not have the odor of an angry and desolate wolf. Okay, so that's under the context clue. Um, while you guys are writing that, think about this. Do we know a little bit more about the character now of what desolate could actually mean? What type of wolf was he? Why was he desolate? He was alone. He was what? Alone. He was alone. He was kind of an outcast, correct? Do you have your context clue written down there, Sam? Mm-hmm. Okay, good job, guys. When you do finish that one, you're looking for, what's the next one? Sensitive. Sensitive. And you guys already found it? Good job. So sensitive is in the same paragraph. But don't you love when that kind of stuff happens? All right, so sensitive. Where are we at? She sniffed again, but her nose was not sensitive again. So I would go all the way to here. She sniffed again, but her nose was not sensitive. Okay? Oops, I V E. Okay? We have a couple of meanings of that we're familiar with, too, we'll talk about in a minute. Sensitive. How many of you are familiar with that word? Yes. Oh, did I forget the R? Okay, her. Okay. And then the last one is Sam's word, swell. I don't think we say that in slang anymore. You're swell, David. That's like old people talk like that, like me. All right, the last one is on paragraph what, 14? All right, so paragraph 14. Okay, so this one you guys all found right away. On the side of the ground, swell, lay, jello. Okay, on the side of the ground, swell, lay. So that's what I'm going to write. On the side of a ground swell. And you can put poor Jello's name in there if you'd like. Okay? So we have our context clues. Now the fun begins. Ooh, I like that uh, Lily kind of circled the word within the context. Good job, Lily. 
All right. Did you find it? Yeah. Chap paragraph 14, hun. Oh, right here. I was looking at 11. Right here. Ground swell. Everybody find it? Yeah. You can help your neighbor if you need to. Okay, back to the Nearpod. I know everybody's just about done writing, but I want you to take a look at your Nearpod. Eyes up here when you're done writing. Looks like just about everybody. Okay, so let's take a look. I, because I'm the nice teacher in the world, gave you guys the dictionary definitions. All right, sometimes we look in the dictionary, sometimes I give them to you. But your job is going to be to read this and tell me which, which definition is correct for the context that we're using. So the first one is bared. What are the two definitions? And you have it right on your page. What is the two definitions? To uncover, expose to view, or lacking clothing. So which one for the story? What do you guys think? To uncover. To uncover and expose? Or to uncut to uh, lacking clothing. Is the wolf no. running around with no clothes? Yes. No. Yes. Well, technically, yeah, yeah. but no. What is the wolf uncovering? His teeth. His teeth. Good job. So that part of speech is going to be an adjective. Now I encourage you, when you write it on your book here, write it very small, because we're going to create our own definition. So you're just going to write ad. Oops. Adjective. Just really small, because this is where you're going to put your own definition. Okay? Hmm? What? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry, Ms. Tremaine. Woo. This is why I have kids. They keep me on their, they keep me on my toes. All right. The next one, desolate, alone and hopeless. It's an adjective. Or empty and uninhibited. Desolate. What do you guys think? Which one? Which one is he? Is he alone and hopeless? Or is he empty or uninhibited? Does desolate could be like a deserted island or a desert where nobody's there? So which one do you think it is? Alone and hopeless. Because he's a wolf, right? He's alone all by himself. So that's going to be the top one. So that is an adjective. Okay, alone and hopeless. Now sensitive has two different definitions as well. So what is our context clue again? She sniffed again, but her nose was not sensitive. Not sensitive. So talk with your group. Read these and tell me, which ones do you think it is? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Easily damaged by slight change. What do you guys think? Amani, which one do you think? Uh, signals or influences. Well, um, that's all this one. Okay. Is she damaged? Easily damaged by a slight change? Is she damaged? No. no. Is she quick to detect a slight change? No. Yes. Okay, so it would be the top one. Okay. And then the last one is a swell. So read those. Which one do you think? A gentle rise in the land? To increase in size or volume or great terrific. I didn't write it in the land. Great terrific. Read the context clue. Uh, so it says, okay, so what does it say? Side of the. Right. So that one's tricky. What do you think? No, I think it's the second one actually. Okay. Okay, listen to what Peyton's saying. Repeat it again, Peyton. It says, on the side of a ground swell lay jello. On the side of a ground swell lay jello. It says, So which one do you think it is? I honestly still think it's the second one because swell could mean, because when I broke my arm, it started like swelling up. Okay. So that could Why are you disagreeing with him? I disagree because swell has different meanings. Like right. I'm swelling my arm is growing bigger in size. And swelling means like. But what's the context clue? It's like the side. He's not actually talking about jello. Yeah. He's not. Oh, he's not talking about jello. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what did you guys come up with? Which one do you think? A gentle rise in the 
Gentle rise of the land. We had a good discussion over here. If you read the context clue, the context clue says what, everyone? On the side of a ground swell lay Jello. Is Jello swelling? No. 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 Is he a terrific guy? Yeah, no. 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 no, he just took someone's pack. So the <laughs> ground swell is the area in which the land has a gentle rise. Yes. And also in the picture it shows him, it shows Jello on a little bump. On a little bump. So we could maybe say that outside Diedrich's in here, we have some ground yes. swells. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you, are you ready for the next part? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to flip to the next slide, but then I'm going to come back to this side because this has your definition, so please don't get scared. All right? So the next slide, this is what you're going to do. You're determining the correct dictionary definition. The correct dictionary definition based on the context. Did we do that? Yes. Yes. Now, with a partner, come up with your own definition based on the dictionary and the context clues. So this is going to be your own words. Do you have to write the definition, the dictionary definitions? in your graphic organizer no. no they are right in front of you so use those two together and you are going to come up with your own definition okay um i'm going to have at least pick two do two and then if you have time you can do the the other th two okay imani yes so you only have about Five minutes, so I will do. Oh, I don't have Dojo up and running. Oh, sorry. Let me see if I can get it quickly. All right. Uh, yes, we can do sticks if I can find those. So, partners, partners. I sh meant to have that, and I apologize. So, Nicoa, you and Matthew are partners. Go. You can sit anywhere in the room. River's absent. Teresa and Diego, you are partners. Leah and Cassie, you are partners. Ariel, you and Nicole are partners. Ashlyn, you and mm, Ryan are partners. David, you and Landon are partners. Peyton, you and Brooklyn are partners. Ellie, you and Charlie are partners. Lily, you and Adriana are partners. Okay, anybody else need a partner? Hayden, you are partners with MJ. And Sam, you are partners with Isaiah. Who else needs a partner? Okay. Amani, you need a partner? I thought I called you. Go uh, join Adriana. All right, have a seat, find a spot. Hmm? Over here, find a spot. So which one are you guys gonna do? Okay, so what's your definition gonna be based off that? Do you want a partner? Uh, no. Okay. I was just wondering, uh, so we put our writing under the words and then we have So you're gonna come up with your own definition, okay? Yes, you're writing it under our definition. So which one are you guys picking? Hmm? Okay. So what is your own definition? Oh, let me go back to the definitions. Okay. There's your definitions from the dictionary. Good job, Landon. All right. So Ellie, what word are you picking? Okay, so what is sensitive? What, what can be your definition? So look here, what is sensitive? Click to detect. Okay, so what, sh what are you going to say? Okay, perfect. I love that. Which one are you picking? Bear? Desolate? What's, what is desolate? Okay, the desolate wolf, and then desolate here we decided was what? Hopeless or alone. So what is what is your definition going to be? Um, 
Like an empty feeling? Yeah. If that makes sense to you and helps you remember. Let's see, what did you choose? Um, the smell was hard to detect. So since it would be like a hard, so mm -hmm. that version would be hard to detect. Yeah. So you're using part of that definition. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense in your head? And you'll remember that word forever and ever and ever. Yes. Okay, if that helps you. Which one did you pick, Sam? So which definition are you using? To uncover. So what does that mean? So what word in there would help you remember that? What what Baird means? Say say what you just said to me. Animal what? Okay, but before you said that, what was the word you used? Animal. Starts with an S. Shh. What did the animal do? When, yes. So is that kind of what they're talking about here? Our definition. Okay. We'll wrap up in about two minutes, if that's okay. How much over was I? Okay. All right. Yes, Charlie. Of course. Goodness. Okay, Hayden, which ones did you use? Okay, that's fine. It's hard to find your own when you when the words make sense to you, huh? You doing okay over here? All right. Okay, finish your two words in about one minute. What do you have? Which one are you picking? Ooh, fragile. That's kind of nice to include that in your in your definition. Good. Okay, what's the other word you're choosing? Okay. Well, that's an example. So what would a definition be? An example is what's out there. A steep hill? A hill, I would say, correct? All right. Okay, thank your partners appropriately. Thank your partners appropriately and then head back to your seats. Okay, last little bit. You have a little quiz. Okay, you have a quiz. Which sentence has context clues to help you with the meaning of sensitive? Well, with the timing, what we really find that we do is look at the objective. What is the lesson specifically asking you to do? So we focus primarily on that. So in the definition, um, lesson, for example, I gave them a lot of information rather than have them look it up in the dictionary or really have a lot of time talking about parts of speech, which was not the lesson. The lesson was determining which definition was correct. So oftentimes we will give them information to allow that to move along a lot more quickly uh, based off the objective. At the beginning when we were doing this, we were kind of trying to do everything and it was way too much. So what's the objective and that's really what we teach too. And we do condense sometimes one and two because uh, they're kind of more like recapping what had happened the week before or setting the precedent of you know the strategy and they're getting pretty fluid with that so we can kind of condense that to less time. Okay so that again with this being a new uh, program, uh, it's really difficult to predict. I don't know what they don't know at this point. So the misconceptions are just kind of out there. Uh, that I think has been the biggest challenge on planning. And again, like I said, we go back to the objective and, and how much time is it gonna take and kind of predicting that has been a struggle because we don't know what they don't know. Um, my team partner and I spend a lot of time debriefing and how far did you get and what did you do and uh, I think that collaboration really has helped me because 
you know, she can get through something quicker by just omitting one thing or adding one thing, and the same as me, and so it's that constant collaboration. Um, our teacher's manuals are full of sticky notes for next year and reflection, and same thing with the Nearpod, we'll go back in and um, take things out or put things in just to kind of speed up the process or realize, hey, they don't know this, let's back up. Um, we're hoping that next year with them having it in fourth grade that it'll be a little bit quicker that, you know, hope is on the horizon, right? <laughs>